Thank you for the kind introduction. Good morning, I'm Sebastian. Bonjour, Roman. And let me start by thanking you for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to talk about the PHP Foundation. And of course, if you are already a sponsor of the PHP Foundation, thank you for that. Um, if you have never heard about the PHP Foundation before or are curious, do I really want to give these people money? Can I trust that they do something useful with that? Then hopefully we will be able to convince you today. <laughs> okay, so the PHP Foundation. Uh, already mentioned, hi, I'm Sebastian. I've been doing things with PHP and to PHP for a really, really, really long time now. I started in 1998 with PHP 3.0.18. Um, that was painful. Uh, I wanted to make the pain go away, so I got into test-driven development at university. There was nothing like that, for blah, 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 blah. I'm not uh, supposed to talk about PHP unit here today, sorry. And I also do not want to talk about myself. Hi, I do PHP unit, I do PHP things. This is Roman. He's more interesting than me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been around PHP for a long time as well. My first PHP was PHP 5.2, I guess. And uh, currently I work at JetBrains and I do um, marketing for PHP Storm, but I'm also involved in community things and probably you've heard about PHP annotated um, newsletter that's also uh, on me. And I help with PHP Foundation. So let's talk about this. And we'll talk about that a lot. So, but before we get to the PHP Foundation, we need some history. And before anyone from the audience complains, yes, this is a photoshopped photo. <laughs> But of course, it's probably a stock photo garage in Silicon Valley. So it, I've been there. It looks like that over there. But not in every garage something meaningful happens. So those four people that they photoshopped into that photo, that's an article from 2004, if I remember correctly, how the open source world plans to smack down Microsoft and Oracle and dot, 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 dot. And that's from Forbes or Fortune or one of those magazines. And they photoshopped the Linus Torvalds in there, um, creator of Linux. Um, Greg Steen from the Apache Software Foundation, the guy in the back with the long hair. Rasmus, who's looking to the side, he created PHP some 27, 28 years ago. And Martin Mikosh, who was the CEO, I think, at the time of MySQL AB which was later bought by Sun, which was later bought by Oracle. And there's this fancy song in the open source world, like we had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun, and then Oracle bought Sun, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's kind of sad what happened there, but anyway. So these projects have all been around for a really long time. The acronyms of those projects made up the LAMP stack, which was a pretty impactful term for at least a long period of time. I hope nobody uses Apache HTTPD anymore. The ASF has re really good open source software, but please don't use Apache HTTPD. Use something more modern like Nginx or Caddy or what have you, but I digress. So all of these at some point thought about, huh, we are a big open source project. We want to fund our development. We want to make sure that we can continue to deliver maintenance and new features and so on. And we want to find a good way of actually doing that. So in 1999, already the Linux Foundation was founded as a nonprofit to support the development of Linux. A year later, the ASF was founded, the Apache Software Foundation. Um, so that happened. MySQL from the beginning was different than those other projects because it started inside an already existing company. So they had commercial backing from the get-go in the form of MySQL AB. Then Sun acquired MySQL, Oracle acquired Sun, and then suddenly we have the MariaDB Foundation, which was founded um, some 10 years ago. PHP, which started in 1995, did not have a foundation until last year. So how did that happen? 
Well, it happened because we are afraid of buses. Yeah, poor little elephant on the street and big bus comes along and runs it over. Yeah, this is the bus factor. And if you go to Wikipedia, you will see the bus factor is a measurement of the risk resulting from information and capabilities not being shared among team members, derived from the phrase, in case they get hit by a bus. And this does not only apply to open source projects. This applies not only to software projects. This applies to any project. If there's one team member and he or she is the only person who knows a specific piece of information and they are sick or they leave or whatever, get lost to the project, that information is lost. And what would happen if that person gets hit by a bus? Yeah, and uh, about, I think, in April or March uh, 2021, Joe, uh, Watkins, who is a, f a contributor to PHP for a long time, you maybe know him for uh, his extensions like PHP, PHP threads or pthreads. Uh, was extension for um, multi-threading programming for PHP, and uh, later he deprecated that and created a parallels extension. Uh, so, but what we appreciate about Joe is that he is really straight and he uh, expresses everything as is. He brings up all the problems. And he wrote a blog post in March 2021 where he noted that the bus factor for PHP is two. Like there are literally two people if they that work on that they uh, concentrate so much knowledge about PHP engine that if both of them for some reason decide to do something else, not PHP, then uh, PHP will be in a very um, bad position, I would say. And uh, I, I read his blog post, like maybe many of you did, and uh, I reached out to Joe uh, to start talking about this. Um, but first, we actually need to maybe mention who are those two people. And those two people are Dimitri and Nikita. And I got my first real scare about the bus pack factor when Nikita finished his university studies a couple of years ago. Because during his studies, he was working a lot on PHP and rewrote or refactored a lot in the compiler for PHP 7 and did a lot of performance improvements and so on and so forth. And I feared what will happen when Nikita finishes university and says, well, I'm no longer a student. I no longer have time um, for this hobby project. And um, now I need to make some money. And what if he does not find a way to make money with what he is currently doing? Thankfully, at the time, my fear was made away by Roman's company because JetBrains hired Nikita. And um, yeah. So I just saw his tweet here. So Nikita <laughs> literally tweeted. Uh, I finished my studies and I'm looking for a job. Just message me. So I messaged him. We jumped on a call and asked, what are you up to? What do you want to do? Do you want to do PHP or do you want to do Rust, LLVM? And he said, I want to do PHP. And that's how he ended up in, at JetBrains. Yep. So those are those two people in the bus. Yeah, and um, in uh, April we started this conversation about uh, how to, what can we do about this bus factor and how we can solve this. Uh, the idea of PHP Foundation or Foundation, it, was, it wasn't new. Uh, like it was discussed by different people throughout this 25 years history of PHP. Uh, there were a few attempts even to create a foundation. So we talked to Joe, we uh, jumped on a few calls with Stefan, who is a colleague of uh, Sebastian. and. Um, Sebastian himself and Nikita, and uh, we started to draft ideas about how this uh, could work. I think initially uh, we wanted to bring maybe more full-time contributors, or maybe we just didn't know what we wanted. We just we just tried to start conversation, just think about how what can we do. Um, yeah. Okay. After lots of discussions. Yeah. We figured out what we can do and what we want to do. And of course, you have to have a vision statement for something like a PHP Foundation. And what we came up with 
is we support, advance, and develop the PHP language. I guess I need to mention that uh, at the time when we started, we didn't know that Nikita uh, wants to change his focus. But uh, about, I think, at September 2021, last year, Nikita uh, came to us. That certainly accelerated things. Yeah. So we before, before that, we were like, okay, we want to do this. We, we take the time that it will take. This will probably take like one or two years yeah. to do this. And suddenly we had like two months. So, yeah, we, we knew that Nikita is going to uh, leave uh, PHP, I mean, change his focus at least from PHP to LLVM uh, after PHP one, uh, 8.1 release. So this is, was our deadline, basically, by the release, we need to spin everything up and start working. So the primary task of the PHP Foundation is to fund developers to further advance the development and maintenance of the language. The latter is actually very important to us because that means getting rid of technical debt, cleaning things up, improving things like the build system, the CI pipelines, making APIs less arcane and more intuitive to use, not only to reduce the risk of bugs, and make, but most importantly, making it easier to onboard new people. Yeah, so uh, as we said, the bus factor is two, and the, the, the amount of knowledge that these two people had is insane. So we need to somehow make that uh, not happen in the future, so that knowledge is shared mm -hmm. in more members. I, I remember Rasmus at, at some conference before this pandemic thing started, I think it was in, in 2019 or 2018, actually, he said, well, if you ask me what the PHP project needs, we need more Nikitas, but Nikitas do not grow on trees. And you, you, you cannot go to a store and buy more Nikitas, so we need to grow them ourselves. And that's in a larger scope um, what, we, what, we want to, uh, want, what we want to do. And also I have to mention about the maintenance. The thing is, there is a, a community around PHP, and uh, you can see RFCs and feature ideas uh, submitted from time to time. But the maintenance part, you don't see it, but it's a lot of work, a lot of bug fixes, everything. It just takes an enormous amount of time, and people don't want to do it as a hobby, you know? Yeah, and it's, not, it's, it's a lot easier to get accepted to speak at a conference, for instance, if, if you say, hey, I want to talk about this fancy new feature in PHP 8.2, then, hey, let me talk about all the bugs I fixed in the last year and how I made the life of everyone working on PHP better. So there is a disconnect there and we, or a gap, and we try to close that gap. Of course, our developer, the developers that we fund also get to work on new features, but some maintenance needs to be done. One other important thing is that we that the, 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 that the PHP Foundation does not interfere with decisions of the existing internals community. We are we participate, we present RFCs, we vote on RFCs, but it's not that but the foundation has no power above the RFC process. Yeah, yeah and this was like our um, motto or... Um, that was from the get-go. Yeah. We, we, yeah. That was clear from the very beginning. We do not want to, to interfere there. Yep. Um, I can start with it. So, um, as, as we said before, we had really tight deadline and we needed to make it uh, quick. So we uh, considered a few options on how can we start the foundation from legal perspective. And before, uh, like, as I said, there were a few attempts to spin up a foundation as a non-profit organization in US or Europe. And, but that would uh, require a lot of paperwork and it wouldn't happen real fast. Also, it, it, it had some disadvantages. Uh, but fortunately, we came to, we found this open collective thing, which is, you can think of it as a foundation, as a service provider. So 
they take care of everything, of legal things, of uh, platform for uh, taking money and distributing money. Taxes, everything. Taxes, everything. And they basically what we have to do is just uh, find people and do our work where we can do, not legal things. They take a fee for that, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it's perfectly fine. It saves us a lot of time. We would not have been able to start the foundation yeah. in the two months that we yeah. had um, without a foundation as a service like Open Collective. So, That's Roman, <laughs> Roman already talked about money and taxes and fees. And one thing that I really liked from the very beginning about Open Collective is that it's 100% transparent. Every cent that gets into the foundation is locked in an audit trail that everyone can look at, even people that are not um, contributing yet. So it's fully public. And every cent that is spent is also there. So you can go there to that website. The numbers today will look a little bit different because those are from 48 hours ago or so. Um, sorry about that. Um, but until two days ago, $664,000 were contributed for which we had to pay like $84,000 in fees. This includes the open collective fee and also payment processing. Yeah, payment processing, credit card payments, whatever, um, and fees for open collective for legal services. Basically, they are our legal entity and provide that as a service. So that leaves us with $580,000 that actually are in our account that we can spend. If you look into where this money is coming from, it's 77% from what Open Collective calls an organization, which in most cases is a company, a corporation, an enterprise, and 23% from individuals. Well, I wanted to just stop for a minute and just yeah. say thank you to all companies and individuals who donated to us, to the foundation. Yeah. <laughs> um, you you can find that we will not list all the names because it's a lot of companies and a lot of people, but you can find all of them on our website or on Open Collective page. Uh, thank you and merci beaucoup to everyone who uh, yes. donates. Um, about sixty percent of the funds that we have raised so far are one-time donations and about 40% are recurring um, donations. But recurring only means that somebody has said, okay, until I cancel this every month, please take this amount of money. There is no legally binding commitment there, like for the next N months, years, I will pay this amount. So, I mean, it is a lot of money that we currently have, but still, uh, we are sometimes scared. Like, if something bad happens and suddenly all of the people cancel their contributions, then that account will run empty rather quickly. Yeah, and as you as you uh, saw on the previous slide, it, mostly it's the the ma major part of the donations comes from uh, big companies. And um, if some of what, some of them drops out, that would be really um, filled by yep. the foundation. Okay. So what have we done with the money so far? We pay, we started in April this year, right? Yeah, we, we uh, took some time to yeah. prepare contracts and uh, find... Uh, find the people, people, talk to them, convince them that they want to be employed by us. I mean, if you have any questions about that, talk to one of our developers here in the front. George, thank you. And 
we took our time and only in April started uh, contracting developers like George. Um, and so far we have paid $104,000 in uh, uh, for, for development. Yeah. yeah, I think it's slightly more because we paid for September, <laughs> but this uh, it, now it's a, now it's a lot more. That was before the payouts that that yeah. I okay that uh, I um, accepted on the train right here yesterday. Yeah. Yes. So we we sometimes uh, get questions of why why don't we spend everything, and uh, there are two reasons for that. First, uh, at the very beginning there were not that many candidates. So we had six uh, candidates who wanted to do this work, and we hired all of them basically. Uh, there were a few that expressed uh, more. There were a few more who expressed the will to do that, but they didn't have like a track of track record of contributions to PHP. So and there was one that can only start at a later point in time. Yeah, yeah, we consider them like uh, as a candidate for the future when we have more funds and maybe we could uh, teach them. We have like mentorship program or something like that, and the other uh, reason is that we wanted to do baby steps and be conservative. So we we don't like uh, for the foundation. Foundation is here for a long time. We don't want to like distribute all the money in one year and then close everything. No, we are staying for years. Uh, that's why we need to guarantee that it will move slightly slower than probably we yeah. could, but it will be safe. This is uh, what we keep in mind. Yeah, we, and we, we want to be sustainable, not exactly like blow everything and have one good year where a lot of stuff happened because we hire like dozens of developers full time or whatever. And then afterwards, we are at the very same point that we were at the beginning because, yeah, so we want to have something sustainable for the future. And so, in case you were wondering, these are the six developers um, that we started with. As I already mentioned, George, George. Is, is here at the event. Uh, George um, is going to present, by the way, um, yeah. today. Oh, no, tomorrow. So, please. And in French, even. <laughs> so, um, uh, Arnaud. Arnaud. Uh, you probably know Arnaud. Maybe he, I think he contributed uh, support for generics to PHP stand. This is a, a static analysis tool uh, that was he, his job. Marte and Derek. Yeah, you know Derek as a uh, XDBug, XDBug yep. uh, author, the one and only. Ilya and Jakub. Um, uh, Ilya contributed a few things. Uh, I think Inams was uh, from Ilya originally. And uh, Jakub, he was, um, he's basically our FPM guru. Yep. Um, if you're using PHP FPM, and you should, you're using stuff that Jakub is now um, responsible for, and he has fixed so many bugs and so many interesting and weird bugs uh, recently. Yeah. This is the board, the administration. Y yeah. So we didn't have, uh, from initially, the, the board was like, it was just people who we thought could help and will not, they will do the job. They will not about uh, talking and s stuff like that. They, the people that can do the work. So they were basically uh, cherry picked from the community. Uh, and uh, this is uh, Joe, as I said, Sarah, you know, Sarah, she, um, she's a release manager of PHP 8 and also a long time contributor. Uh, she's one of the architects of HHVM. Um, Nikita, you know, Nikita, Sebastian. Uh, Josefa from Automatic yeah, and, and the WordPress Foundation. Yeah, Benjamin, uh, he's one of the doctrine contributors and also- PHP uh, 8 attributes. Yeah, PHP attributes, you know him uh, from that. He has his own company, Tideways, which is one of the major sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, Niels, composer, composer, you all use composer, right? Composer, packages, Nicola, symphony, Nicolas. He's, he's here. Uh, and Matthew Viorofini from, from Zend. From Zend, um, project lead for Laminas, which used to be Zen Framework. Yep. So we meet uh, 
every two weeks and we do asynchronous discussions uh, on GitHub. That, and that's what we use all the money for, like every two weeks fly to somewhere. No, of course not. <laughs> This, these are online meetings. Um, um, and we also have this kind of community around the foundation. Uh, as, as I mentioned, our PHP fellows, Dmitry and Erasmus, who blessed the, the whole idea of the foundation and uh, helped with a few uh, comments here and there. We also have uh, Ayesh. He's writing this uh, PHP core roundup blog post every month where he overviews of what the team has done, not only PHP foundation team, but the whole PHP core team. So if you want to be like, if you don't have time to follow every discussion or whatsoever about PHP, you can just subscribe to this newsletter and blog post and have a short like uh, recap of or everything what's happened. Tobias, he's a... Um, our uh, code of conduct uh, lead so he overviews that everything follows code of conduct and sergey takes care of our website <laughs> he's the release manager of uh, php 8.2 by the way we did not have numbers on the screen for far too long so if we look at all the commits um, that were made to PHP since we started paying those six developers. All six of them are like in the top list of contributions. And of course, numbers don't mean much. Jakub worked as hard and uh, uh, did a lot of contributions at uh, uh, the same level that George and Martin, and Derek and Ilya and Arno did, but just in, in fewer commits. So, but this looks quite good. Yeah, but, I mean, You can see that it's just a big part of PHP development currently. Yeah. And to give you an idea of what they have been working on, and I think he'll you'll talk about this at this event, right? Yeah. So uh, DNF types, uh, true, false, null types, a lot of refactoring and cleanup, bug fixes, documentation, migration guides for PHP A2, That's what George worked on. Arno worked on bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes in opcache. And this is like at the very core of what we want to do. This is reducing the bus factor. The bus factor for opcache, the bytecode cache, and the optimizer is now no longer two. Yes. It's probably not three yet, but it's like 2.5 maybe on the way to three. But that is good. That makes me very happy and feel safe. Reduced memory usage of a lot of stuff. Um, and it also shows that it's okay to work on something that in the end does not get accepted. Yeah, and goes to show that we do not overrule what the community, what the internals community votes on in the RFC process. Arno prepared the short closures RFC, implemented it, put it to the vote. It was voted against. From the foundation perspective, that's okay. We still pay him for the time that he worked on that because why shouldn't we? It's, it's research. We now know as a community how we do not want this feature. We learned something. That's good. Mate worked on read-only classes, improvements to the API stub generator, which is very important, again, to reduce technical debt, make it easier to work on the core. Yeah. Derek um, worked on... Uh, a lot of bugs uh, in daytime and these are really hard bugs to track and fix no one wants to do them thank you derek for doing all yeah. of this and uh, for managing um, php 7.4 release i've i've known derek for a really long time by now and i'm really glad that he has his quirks and one of those quirks is that he's really fascinated by dates and times and time zones and <laughs> and we are lucky that we have somebody like him um, Ilya did a few um, improvements um, for enums and lots of bug fixes. And he also handles CI stuff, which is really important. 
we now have much better CI pipelines than we used to have like half a year ago or so. As we mentioned before, Jakub is our FPM guru. He takes care of FPM. He, he made some refactorings, improved tests and things around it so that other folks could also pick it up. And also focus recently on XT open SSL, security stuff, cryptography, important. Okay, so we um, actually got to almost finish and uh, you can ask our ask questions about the future, but you also can um, scan this code. And this is a survey that we prepared um, yesterday. Uh, basically, it's, it's just some questions about uh, PHP future development, how you want to see it. Just uh, let us know. All the questions there are not mandatory, so you can scroll and answer whatever you want. Uh, or you can scroll till the end and just enter your email to take part in the raffle of elephants. That's also okay. And uh, there also in this survey there is a picture of uh, elephant PHP Foundation elephant, which is um, coming maybe next year. We'll see. Uh, so this is something exclusive we are presenting here for you today. And uh, yeah, you can ask our questions now. Anything. Thank you. I guess we can even receive them some standing ovation because they, I, I get they maintain our work actually. <laughs> Thank you. So, do you have any question? Yeah. Uh, thanks for this awesome presentation and, and the initiative in general. Um, thanks for uh, helping us to keep working. And I had a question about the current team and the future of the different projects you're going to work on in the foundation itself. Um, you talked about onboarding new developers to allow them to contribute uh, to the PHP ecosystem. And I would like to know if you have someone in mind that is going to contribute to documentation, onboarding process, compilation process, etc., on the PHP uh, itself. Because here we are talking about fixing bugs, which is absolutely great. But since we need to somehow increase the bus factor, we need documentation and explanations on why and how uh, PHP is compiled and stuff. So mm -hmm. that, that, do you have someone in mind or do you have plans for that? There is very good question. Thank you for that. There is already work being done on that because for some of the stuff that was cleaned up and refactored and made easier, the, uh, the documentation was updated and extended. That exists. That, 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 Part of the documentation is the PHP internals book, um, and that give the documents how you write a certain extension, how do you extend the language, and, and, and so on. That is far from where we would like to have it, to make it really easy for people. Um, but it's definitely something that's on our roadmap to, fi to figure out how best to proceed there and then find the right person to, to fill that role. We had even an idea to, uh, to at JetBrains to kind of create a bootcamp for core developers, but it was, this will take uh, time to, <laughs> to do. But yeah, it's definitely on our radar and on our table to work on. I think now everyone is uh, on the survey. <laughs> <laughs> or people just want us to leave the stage so that they can have coffee or something. <laughs> Another question? No. <laughs> uh, so one little question about the 
the different person you recruited. Uh, I understand it's mostly on the C programming uh, things today. Yes. Uh, do you plan to open maybe uh, some different uh, to, to different persons like documentation specific persons or? Yeah, exactly. So we were thinking about uh, actually uh, hiring technical writer to work on documentation. We uh, we don't have like uh, exact plans when this is going to happen. It depends on how much donations we get. Uh, but uh, yeah, this this is a very important thing to do. Uh, and maybe if we have uh, this person, we could even participate in uh, Google Season of Docs, which is uh, like a campaign for uh, a program for um, documentation uh, teams uh, to improve their documentation in open source projects. It was just the natural first step for us to start with C developers, because that's what we are in need of the most right now and expand the knowledge. But it's certainly not going to, or we do not want to keep it limited to that in the long run. We just need to keep it slow, sustainable, baby steps. Hi. There's one more question over here. Yeah. Sorry for asking a second question. I uh, hope nobody has uh, another question, but um, I have a hot take at a question. Um, Daniel Stenberg from the Curl uh, software decided to introduce Rust Hyper into the library. Linus Torvalds started to introduce uh, Rust into the kernel. Is there some plans to maybe try to make some research on introducing the Rust language to the PHP internals? Um, I don't think we discussed that. Uh, and uh, yeah. Can, can you give George the mic? Uh, well, Hop on stage. Hello. Oh, wow. Here with myself. Um, I think with Rust, we haven't really looked into it because a lot of the like extensions and a lot of the language in the VM like abuses C in the sense that you can't do with Rust. Like you, do, it does stuff with like memory, like memory layout knowing how it is like a lot of opcache is just having assumptions in how the layout is and basically being able to extract it. That's per personally why I have no idea how opcache actually works because it's like black magic to me, not gonna lie. So Arnaud just working on it is even for me a big relief because it's like, okay, we have somebody who can work on it. But I think for us, yeah, like, I don't think it's out of the table. I mean, it's, I suppose it's a typical joke. Let's just rewrite everything in Rust. Um, maybe for extensions. So keep the core C for the time being and provide like a foreign interface for like Rust to like interact with. I know that I think there are like some projects which do that already on their own, but I haven't really had a look and I don't really know Rust yet. That's on my plan to do as well. But. I, I think the, the bottom line is that uh, Sebastian and I are not core developers and it's up to core developers to decide uh, this thing. I think the more they learn, the more they figure out what's, uh, what would be beneficial to the core and if Rust is something that they see beneficial, yeah, why not? Thank you very much. It's done now. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm.